the Wood Mother, your local woodland cryptid and your very own magical nanny. If you're joining me here from TikTok, welcome and thank you for all the support you guys have shown me. And I know I did promise you that I'd make a video about my wedding dress. I know you might be wondering, Wood Mother, if you're gonna tell us about your wedding dress, what are you doing in the woods? To which I would answer, I'm the Wood Mother, darling. This is my natural habitat. I'm also here to tell you about one of my greatest inspirations for the design of the dress. The American beech tree, Fagus grandifolia. My love for the beech tree goes back to when I was about eight or nine years old. Uh, that's when I read the Chronicles of Narnia for the first time. And there are a lot of moments in Prince Caspian in particular that really stood out to me as a kid. Uh, and that deserves a whole video all its own. But one of my favorite moments was this bacchanal in the forest on the eve of the second battle of Aslan's Howe. And all the dryads and forest spirits and fawns and even Bacchus himself uh, showed up. I just have such a vivid visceral memory of like all these forest spirits dancing near the river. And I specifically remember C.S. Lewis's description of the dryads. All the trees of the world seemed to be rushing towards Aslan, but as they drew nearer, they looked less like trees. And when the whole crowd, bowing and curtsying and waving thin long arms to Aslan, were all around Lucy, she saw that it was a crowd of human shapes. Pale birch girls were tossing their heads, Willow women pushed back their hair from their brooding faces to gaze on Aslan. The queenly beeches stood still and adored him. Shaggy oak men, lean and melancholy elms, shock-haired hollies, and gay rowans all bowed and rose again, shouting, Aslan, Aslan. I never forgot the way Lewis described beech trees as so queenly and elegant. And I later learned that J.R.R. Tolkien took inspiration from a grove of beech trees when he was writing of the forest of Lothlorien with the Malorn trees that have golden leaves. That's the coolest thing about beeches, in my opinion, is that they don't lose their leaves in the fall. They just turn this papery, golden copper color like onion skins, and they stay on the tree all winter long, and they don't fall off till the new leaves come in the spring. And those new leaves are the most translucent, pale green you've ever seen. The trees also grow very slowly. Um, they end up with these very long, elegant, straight trunks that have this almost smooth, silvery gray texture. It's unlike any other kind of tree bark I've ever seen. So we've established that I like trees and I'm a big nerd. How does this relate to my wedding dress? I knew I wanted to incorporate the vibes of C.S. Lewis's beech tree dryads into the design of the dress, but I didn't want to make it too fantasy or hyper-realistic. I didn't want it to quite look like, you know, how the children in Game of Thrones had like moss and twigs and tree bark all growing on them. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that C.S. Lewis was a medievalist and that really permeated a lot of his work. And in the medieval era, their art was a lot more simplistic and symbolic as opposed to trying to render it uh, really realistically or naturalistically, which was a style that didn't really develop until the Renaissance. Conveniently, uh, the way that the roots of beech trees slope away from the trunks really reminded me of the shape of medieval kirtle dresses. Boom, there we go, that's the shape of the dress, no brainer. Uh, in terms of color and texture, I knew I wanted the dress to be pale gray, like beech bark, instead of pure white. Specifically, I wanted a gradient of nearly white up top, uh, going down to a darker gray at the bottom with sort of bits of green climbing up from the hem, like the way moss grows on the tree roots. As for the veil, I knew that I, I had to use the veil to sort of represent this otherworldly haze of beech leaves because they're so translucent and they catch the light in such an interesting way. 
So after taking a lot of pictures of trees and spending way too much time on Pinterest in the months leading up to my wedding, I finally began to put my ideas to paper or to iPad. Here is the preliminary design I came up with. Uh, you can see I took a lot of inspiration from Eowyn's white dress from the Two Towers. So that's the silhouette figured out. Now what about the texture? Well, in all of my Pinterest research, I had been coming across something called wet felting. Now, what's wet felting? A lot of people ask, and I always ask them, have you ever accidentally put a wool sweater into the washing machine and it shrank a whole lot? Congratulations, you have made wet felt. Wet felting uses water, soap, heat, and agitation, which are all things found in a washing machine, to turn wool fibers like this into a tangled together, solid, cohesive whole. This actually was a felted wool sweater from the thrift shop that I used to make this hat. But because it was knitted first, it's still a little stretchy. Whereas this was made using loose wool fibers that hadn't been turned into yarn, hadn't been knitted together yet. And so this is a lot less stretchy. So at the time I was planning my wedding in 2018, I had just gotten done working at my college uh, in the weaving studio, learning how to weave on a floor loom. And I really loved weaving, I still do, I have a loom at home. Um, but weaving is very linear and structured. You're laying down each row one at a time, whereas felt, you can see there's no like grain to it. There's no up and down or side to side. It's very non-linear and it has this sort of nubbly, bumpy texture. This side has fabric embedded into it that I thought would be perfect for tree bark. Uh, the only problem was I had never felted anything before. I didn't know how to felt. But I thought if I teach myself how to felt with this very ambitious project, then everything else I ever felt afterwards will feel easy by comparison. And I was right. Nothing else so far has had the same kind of emotional stakes or deadline as that. And every time I'm felting something and I, I hit a challenge, I think, well, at least it's not a wedding dress. So it's actually given me a lot of confidence in my felting. Uh, I just did the hardest thing first, and so now it's a breeze. So how do you actually turn this into this? Well, I will tell you in part two. Uh, this is probably going to be a long series because there were a lot of steps in making this dress. So subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss when the next part comes up. Also like this video, please. And, and if you haven't already, go follow me on TikTok. I post a lot more frequently there. Um, you get to see just the day-to-day -day aspect of what I'm making and what I'm doing. And I make a lot of cool, fun jokes about Narnia and the 2018 Tom Hardy movie, Venom. Also, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram where I have a shop set up. So you can go to my Facebook or Instagram page and sh uh, buy some of my cool felted stuff directly from there. All right, I have had a lot of fun talking to you guys today and I shall see thee all anon. I didn't steal that from Bernadette Banner, by the way. I work at a Renaissance festival. And so I've been saying anon before I ever heard Bernadette Banner say it. So don't at me. Bye. So that's the... Now someone's using a chainsaw. Let's go and fill Moomin Valley with crime, come on!